Hi guys, this is Arvind from Mind Magics, and today I welcome you all to this amazing session on networking interview questions. Okay, so guys, doesn't matter if you are a fresher or an experienced candidate. So computer networks is one such topic around which you should have good amount of knowledge. Okay, especially for freshers, like if you have uh, passed out recently and you are trying to appear for the interviews, giving offline interviews as well. So. Computer networks is very important. Apart from that, you know, DBMS, operating system, basic computer programming, these are also important. Okay, so in this particular video around computer networks, interview questions, so we have covered very basic and important questions that you must be able to answer in the actual interview. Okay, so that is the whole idea or you can say the agenda behind this video. So without any further delay, let's get started with our first question. So the first question is a very basic question. So the question says define computer networks. Okay, so computer network can be defined as a set of computers connected with each other so as to communicate and share the resources. And what are those resources? So those resources can be software, hardware, and any kind of data. Okay, so this was a very simple and basic definition of computer networks. The next question is, what is the use of NIC and can a computer work without NIC in network? So first and foremost, NIC stands for Network Interface Card. So what is NIC? So NIC is the bridge between computer and the network. So without the NIC card, the computer cannot connect to any network. So apart from this, NIC is also known as an Ethernet card or a network adapter. The next question is explain network topology. So network topology is the physical structure of computers. It states the way computers, cables, devices, etc., are connected with each other. Okay, so there are a few ways through which computers are connected with each other. And that way is defined by network topology. The next question is define node and routers. So if you talk about node, so node can be described as a point or a join where the connection is built. So any device connected in network is considered as a node. So to establish a network, two or more nodes are required. Okay. And if you talk about routers, so routers can be termed as a device through which network segments are connected. These network devices save information like routing tables, hops, and so on. So by using this information, routers can determine the best path available to transfer the data from the source to the destination. The next question is, tell me the different types of networks along with their area of usage. Okay, so guys, as you can see on the screen, these are the various types of networks such as PAN, LAN, MAN and WAN. So PAN is nothing but personal area network. And if you talk about the usage, so this is basically used in your homes. Okay, so if you talk about Wi-Fi at your home, so just to give you an example, the Wi-Fi at your home that you use is an example of PAN. Okay, now the next type of network over here is LAN, which is local area network. So this is generally used in small cafes or offices. Okay, the next one is the MAN, which is metropolitan area network. So this particular network is used in a particular city or a town. Okay, so the next type of network is WAN, so which is wide area network. So this is generally spread across the world. Okay, so these are the different types of networks. The next question is, can you tell me the most basic use of a switch in networking? So the switch can connect to various computers together. For example, seven port switch can join seven computers in a single network. The next question is, in which topology centralized device is used for connectivity? So the answer to this question is star topology utilizes a hub or switch as a centralized device for connectivity. The next question is name a topology that uses a coaxial cables and terminators. So the answer to this question is the bus topology. So bus topology uses coaxial cables and terminators. So guys in computer networks, there are generally different types of network topologies that are available such as bus, ring, pre, star, mesh, and hybrid. So guys, while going 
while appearing for the interview, you must be aware of the definitions and the usages of all these topologies. The next question is, explain the mechanism in a ring topology. So in a ring topology, every computer is connected with two or more computers and this is how the loop will be formed. So here the data will be flown only in a single direction. So source computer transmits the data in a circle and each computer will check whether the data has been intended for them. And if yes, they will pick up the data packet from the ring. If not, they will pass the data packet to the next computer. So this is how the data packet will reach to the destination. The next question is explain the mechanism used in a mesh topology. So in a mesh topology, each device is connected with all of the rest of the devices residing in that particular network. So to connect n nodes, n into n minus 1 by 2 connections are required in a mesh topology. So for example, to connect four devices, six connections will be required in a mesh network. And how did we come to the number six for four devices? So as I told you, the formula is n into n minus 1 upon 2 where n is the number of nodes. So for four devices, you will require six connections. And this is I'm talking about the mesh topology. The next question is describe the pros and cons of bus topology. So if you talk about the pros of bus topology, so bus topology incurs the lowest cost among all of the topologies that are available. And if you talk about the cons, so all of the devices are connected with a single cable. So if the main cable breaks, then the whole network will be affected. So guys, this is generally known as a single point of failure. So this is one of the biggest drawbacks of bus topology. The next question is explain hybrid topology. So the hybrid topology consists of more than one topology in the same network. For example, hybrid star bus topology, here the multiple star topologies are joined with a single bus topology. The next question is please explain the potential differences between intranet, internet and extranet. So these terms can be described as a way network applications are being accessed. So if you talk about internet, so everyone and anyone around the world can access the applications using internet. And if you talk about intranet, so only authorized users from the organization can access the application for which it has been built. Okay, so guys, these terms might sound similar, but they are different. Okay, and it, it can be also confusing for you guys to remember the differences between them. So internet is a very wide term and intranet is a, you can say a less wide term. So a very simple trick to remember the difference between these two is that intranet, like you can say intracity and intercity. So I'm just giving you an example to compare. Okay, so if you talk about intercity, so intercity means the connection between two cities like traveling from one city to another city. So that is called as intercity travel. Whereas intracity is traveling within the same city. Okay. So based on this example, you can remember internet, like everyone and anyone around the world can access the applications on internet. And if you talk about intranet, only authorized users from the organization can access the application. Okay. And the next point over here is extranet. So selected external users are allowed to use the application for which it has been built. Okay, so I hope this explains the differences between internet, intranet and extranet. The next question is a very important question. So the question says explain the OSI reference model. So guys, whenever you are asked this question in the actual interview. So the first and foremost thing that you must do is you must draw this particular diagram as you can see over here. These are the various layers of OSI model such as application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer and physical layer. Okay, these are the layers in this particular order from top to bottom. And as you can see here, these three layers network data link and physical are the hardware layers and application presentation and session are the software layers. And this particular layer, this is the center of all of these layers. And this is the heart of the OSI model. Okay. And these are the directions like for sender. It is from top to bottom and for the receiver. It is from the bottom to the top. 
Okay, so these directions are also important that you must understand. So OSI basically stands for Open System Interconnection and OSI model describes the way application interacts with each other over a particular network. And in the actual interview, when you draw this diagram, you must also mention the definitions of these particular layers. Okay. The next question is also a very important question, guys. What is the TCP IP model? So the TCP IP stands for Transmission Control Protocol and the Internet Protocol. So it is one of the most widely used protocols in the networks. So it describes how the data should be packaged, transferred and routed in the network. And if you talk about the TCP IP model, so these are the various layers that are present in the TCP IP model, such as application layer, transport layer, internet layer and network access layer. Okay, so guys in the actual interview also you might like the interviewer might ask you a question. What are the differences between the OSI model and the TCP IP model? Okay, so you must be able to answer this question. The next question is explain HTTP and HTTPS. Okay, so HTTP basically stands for hypertext transfer protocol and it is used to transmit the content across the web. So it uses the TCP port number 80. And if you talk about HTTPS, so it is a secure HTTP and to avoid the tampering or the loss of data or the data theft. So HTTPS encrypts the data packets transmitted in the network. So what do you mean by encryption? So encryption basically means transforming the data into one particular format, which is understood only by the sender, sender and the receiver. Okay, so that is why you encrypt the data into a particular format so that it is safe from the external users or hackers or anyone who wants to steal your data. And HTTPS uses the TCP port number 443. The next question is explain the difference between transmission and communication. So transmission is nothing but data is transferred from the source to the destination. So this involves the physical movement of data. And if you talk about communication, so here the data is transmitted between the source and the destination. So this involves sending and receiving the data packets between source and destination. Okay, so guys, the important point that you must understand over here is in the actual transmission of data, the data is physically transferred from the source to the destination. So understand the difference is physical movement of data. And if you talk about communication here, the data packets are sent from the source to the destination. The next question is what is the data transmission modes available to transfer data over a network? So there are basically three types of modes for data transmission available over a network such as simplex, half duplex and full duplex. So what do you mean by simplex? So data transfer can be established only in one direction. Just to give you an example, all the radio signals are simplex in nature. The next point is half duplex. So data transfer can be established in both direction, but not at the same time. So in case of simplex, it was unidirectional, but in case of half duplex, it is bidirectional, but not at the same time. For example, internet browsing. So once we send a request to the server, then the server will process it and then it will send you the response. So this is an example of half duplex. Then the next point is full duplex. So data transfer can be established in both the direction simultaneously. For example, a phone communication. So whenever you call a person with your phone, so that is basically a full duplex connection. The next question is, what is the full form of IDEA and ASCII? I like ASCII. So IDEA stands for International Data Encryption Algorithm and ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. The next question is a very important question. The question says, what do you mean by DNS? So DNS is the domain name server or domain naming server. So it is the bridge between domain names and the IP addresses. So the computer only gets numbers, whereas human only remembers the names. For example, if you talk about gmail.com, so gmail.com is the name given by humans. But when we hit gmail.com on your browser, so the DNS or the domain naming server translates it into numbers and then processes our requests. So whenever you type gmail.com on your web browser, so 
gmail.com is the name which is understood by humans but when you actually type gmail.com and hit enter on your web browser so what your computer does is it translates it into a particular ip address so which is the ip address of the server okay so this is basically the dns like the role of dns the next question is explain piggybacking so for any sent data frame the receiver must acknowledge this to the sender so instead of sending the acknowledgement stand alone the receiver will wait and send acknowledgement along with the next data frame so this particular process is known as piggybacking the next question is a very important question explain ip config and if config so if you talk about ip config so it is nothing but internet protocol configuration so this command is used for viewing and configuring the network interface on microsoft windows so it is also used to identify dhcp protocol and dns settings now if you talk about if config so it stands for interface configuration so this command is for linux mac and unix operating system so through this command we can configure and control the tcp ip network interface from the command line so we can see the ips of these networks using this particular command the next question is what is round trip time so round trip time can also be known as the round trip delay so it is the total time taken by a signal to reach the destination node and come back to the sender node with the acknowledgement the next question is define beaconing so if any problem in the network is identified and repaired by the network itself then it is known as beaconing so fddi and token ring mainly use this beaconing process so beaconing guys you can say is it is a process of a network for self healing okay so if, if at all any network is damaged or you know there is some problem with the network due to some known or unknown reason then the network has the ability to heal itself and this pro particular process is known as beaconing the next question is is there any way to recover the data of a system that is infected by a virus so the answer to this question is yes and how do you do this so first you prepare a new system with os and antivirus then you connect the hdd or the hard disk drive of the infected system with the new system as a secondary drive then you scan it and clean the virus and once it is cleaned transfer the data from the secondary drive to the new system the next question is differentiate between baseband and broadband transmission so in a baseband transmission the full bandwidth of the cable will be taken by a single signal whereas in broadband transmission multiple signals with multiple frequencies can be sent simultaneously the next question is define crosstalk so crosstalk is the disturbance which is generated by adjacent wires so guys in general if there are multiple wires around each other connected to different networks or devices or even the systems so crosstalk is nothing but the disturbance which is generated by the adjacent wires the next question is explain the use of tracer so tracer is a tool which is used to list the path taken by a data packet from the router to the destination node so it also mentions the count of the total hops taken in the entire route the next question is what is the use of netstat so netstat is the command line tool and it is used to list out all of the important tcp ip settings of a connection the next question is if you use longer cables than the preferred ones will it make any difference so if we use longer cables than the preferred ones so it will cause signal loss in case of transmissions so guys in general for transmission purposes the cables should be as short as possible so guys with this we have come to the end of the session on networking interview questions so we have tried to cover maximum questions here and if at all you have any doubts or queries related to this session then you can write them in the comment section and we will try to resolve your doubts as early as possible so guys thank you so much for being with us and i wish you all the very best for your upcoming interview have a good day